Jawaharlal Nehru was an Indian independence activist and the first prime minister of India an accomplished writer a secular and modern thinker in 1928 Jawaharlal Nehru was put in an Allahabad jail during India's freedom struggle he used to write letters to his daughter Indira to bridge the distance and share his idea with her who was living in Mussoorie this was the last letter written to Indira on 9th August 1933 he wrote that his 2 year of imprisonment was going to end and he still have to spend 33 more days in jail he got 3 and 1/2 month remission of his sentence he was going to end his 6th sentence and he will go out again into the wide world but no use because most of his friends and comrades were in jail and the whole country seemed a vast prison he wrote so many letters that it made mountain which was written on swadeshi paper with swadeshi ink he wrote that she may not be interested in his message conveyed with swadeshi paper and ink but he is feeling joy in writing it time passed with winter spring summer monsoon and finally autumn and the year cycle was over and again began winter and spring and summer and the rainy season then he wrote about the great english statesman who wrote that other people who are condemned to exile and they are captured if they survive they lost all their hopes and the man who spent his time writing letters had opinion that those days were the sweetest days of his life hugo grotiums who was a famous dutch jurist and philosopher of the 17th century who was condemned to imprisonment for life but managed to escape after 2 years he spent these 2 years in prison in philosophic and literary work they were rich sources of inspiration for nehru when he was at this point of time in prison which is a place of despair there have been many famous literary prisoners the two best known were spaniard cervantes who wrote don quixote and the englishman john bunyan who wrote pilgrim's progress he wrote that reading and writing helped him a lot to spend time in jail his education started with science at college and then took to law and developed various interests in life finally adopted the popular and widely practiced profession of jail going in india a prison with no libraries or reference books at hand is not the most suitable place to write on historical subjects he relied largely on his many notebooks which he had accumulated since he began his visits to jail 12 years ago so whatever he wrote is not original but are the facts and ideas collected shamelessly from the books which came to him and gone whatever he wrote was not history but they were just short glimpses of world's long past if she likes history she will find many books which will help her to unravel the threads of past ages Nehru says if she would know the past she must look upon it with sympathy and understanding to understand a person who lived long ago 
one will have to understand his environment the condition under which he lived the ideas that filled his mind there is no one to defend slavery today and yet the great plato held that slavery was essential within recent times scores of thousands of lives were given in an effort to retain slavery in united state we cannot judge the past from the standards of the present everyone will willingly admit this but everyone will not admit the equally absurd habit of judging the present by the standards of the past the various religions have especially helped in petrifying old beliefs and faiths and customs which may have had some use in the age and country of their birth they are of course singularly unsuitable in our present age nehru says that if you look upon past history with the eye of sympathy the dry bones will fill up with flesh and blood and you will see a mighty procession of living men and women and children in every age and every clime different from us and yet very like us with much the same human virtues and human failings history is not a magic show but there is a plenty of magic in it for those who have eyes to see innumerable pictures from the gallery of history crowd our minds egypt babylon nineveh the old indian civilizations the coming of the aryans to india and their spreading out over europe and asia the wonderful record of chinese culture norsos and greeks imperial rome and byzantium the triumphant march of the arabs across the two continents the renaissance of indian culture and its decay the little known maya and aztec civilization in america the vast conquest of mongol the middle age of europe with their wonderful gothic cathedral the coming of islam to india and the mughal empire the learning and art in western europe discovery of america and the sea routes of the east the beginnings of western aggression in the east the coming of big machine and the development of capitalism the spread of industrialism and european domination and imperialism and the wonders of science in the modern world great empires have risen and fallen and been forgotten by man for thousands of years till their remains were dug up again by patient explorers from under the sands that covered them and yet many an idea many a fancy has survived and proved stronger and more persistent than the empire history is the past says nehru but they tell us that speak of limitless potentialities humans are capable of we have the responsibility to make a better history in our future catching the fire of inspiration from heroes of the past egypt's might is tumble down down a down the deeps of thought greece is fallen and troy down glorious rome hath lost her crown venice pride is not but the dream their children dreamed fleeting unsubstantial vain shadowy as the shadow seemed airy nothing as they deemed these remains this was the song of mary courage egypt's history has a beginning far beyond the word
taking the written form to the days of the gods and its pyramids that stand out in its culture. Nomads settling at the Nile River dates back to 6000 BC. Rather than school, archaeologists teach much about the high use of light and laser, globalized designs and communication and even genetic modifications by the Nephilims and giants living in those times. All such living styles lay buried today. Venice rose as a major maritime power and heights of prominence during the Renaissance and the Middle Ages. The core point of commerce during the 13th to the 17th century, art, grain, spice and silk. It reached the peak of prominence in the 14th century when it became the first international financial center. Mary Corrid thinks that each civilization had their season of rain and glory, but they all vanished from the horizon of history. And yet, and everything did not vanish altogether. The dreams that contained their heritage did not die with the fall of these empires. They remained retained and passed on to succeeding generations and they live on. Mary's song kept the fire of hope burning in Nehru also at a time when freedom that he and other prisoners dreamed of was stifled behind prison bars and it did break the prison bars and emerged victorious when India emerged out of her prisons as an independent nation on August 15, 1947. Nehru says that it is right that we acknowledge our obligation to the past. But the past does not exhaust our duty or obligations. We owe a duty to the future also. And it is greater than the one we owe to the past. For the past is past and done with. We cannot change it. The future is yet to come and perhaps we may be able to shape it a little. If the past has given us some part of truth, the future also hides many aspects of the truth and invites us to search for them. But often the past is jealous of the future and holds us in a terrible grip and we have to struggle with it to get free to face and advance towards the future. Nehru says that history has many lessons to teach us. There is another saying that history never repeats itself. Both are true for we cannot learn anything from it by clavishly trying to copy it or by expecting it to repeat itself or remain stagnant. We can learn something from it by prying behind it and trying to discover the forces that move it. We do not get a straight answer from history. According to Karl Marx, history has no other way of answering old questions than by putting new ones. The old days were days of faith. The wonderful temples, mosques, cathedrals of past centuries could never have been built but for the overpowering of faith of the architects and builders and people generally. The various stones that they reverently put one on top of the other are carved into beautiful designs tell us of this faith the old temple spire the mosque with its slender minarets the gothic cathedral all of them pointing upward with an amazing intensity of devotion as if offering a prayer in stone or marble to the sky above thrill us even now nehru finishes this last letter telling indra that he has given her in this letter many quotations and extracts from poets and others that he shall finish it up with one more it is none other than of ravindranath tagore's prayer poem from gitanjali where the mind is without fear and the head is held high, where knowledge is free, 
where the world has not been broken into fragments by narrow domestic walls where words come out from the depth of truth where tireless striving stretches its arms towards perfection where the clear stream of reason has not lost its way into the dreary desert sand of dead habit where the mind is led forward by the into every widening thought and action into that heaven of freedom my father let my country awake rabindranath tagore explains the meaning of this freedom in this immortal freedom song freedom is a place a heaven where the human mind reaches the state of freedom such freedom is attained in the human mind freedom is a state of human mind in which fear is absolutely absent such a state comes from knowledge knowledge about the truth of the multifarious aspects of life when fear is absent a person no matter he is a beggar or a king he holds his head high in dignity in an attitude of having dominion he is always striving towards perfection when man discovers such deberating knowledge clarity comes in his thoughts his words and actions when each person in the country rises up to such depths and heights of truth he will experience true freedom instead of division and fights there would be unity love health happiness and prosperity